Hi both. How are you? What's up, Josh? How are you? Yeah, doing great. Thanks. Awesome to be speaking to you again because I love Scream and I got to say I love Scream 6 even more. And, and I wanted to start off by saying how much I loved the aesthetic of the seeing those older ghost face masks in the film. And I know obviously they play a big role in the story, but I'd, I'd like to start off by asking where did the inspiration for that come from? Because like I said, it makes such a striking visual. It was a handful of things. I think that we knew that uh, movies into the franchise, you know, uh, they typically make franchises typically make a change like that, right? They take, they take a risk with the elements that are the most iconic. And so it felt like, six in ah, we had to take we had to take that chance and then you know i, I think kudos to guy and jamie and and just the path of this of this this script that um there was an actual reason for it to for it to look that way right the idea that we're we're telling a story in a lineage but that's also very much about that lineage you know we're really very specifically exploring um the consequences of those other movies and how they've kind of tracked through the through the lives of all of these characters gave that mask a real reason to to look the way that it looks. And then, you know, I think from there you you just you give you give control over to the super talented people you've brought on and, and Avery and her team, um, you know, with the directive of making those masks always look scary, of course, first and foremost, and never so different that it it doesn't feel like Ghostface, but different enough that it feels memorable. And, you know, when you see that cracked mask, you know, um, the person wearing wearing it means business. Um, and we're we're just so pleased. I remember seeing tests in prep and just being blown away as that as that mask was designed. Well, that's fantastic. And you know, I love the movies New York set in, and I thought you guys did a great job with that. I'm just curious, did, did you ever consider having some of the kills take place at, you know, some of those bigger landmarks? I'm just thinking about unleashing Ghostface, you know, in Times Square or the Statue of Liberty, or <clears throat> is that not the story you wanted to tell necessarily? Uh, I mean, I don't think we had the budget to tell that story. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of the, 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 those set pieces didn't change much from the early drafts. It was kind of like they were sort of the tent poles of the script in a lot of ways. And I think one of the things that we thought was so cool about them and, and about the script in general with the New York setting, and then we really took this to heart when we were in production was, how do we make this a New York story that's not like the Hitchcock version, which we love Hitchcock, but you know, we're not going to the top of the Statue of Liberty because again, not, not an option. So how do we make this feel like something that's really just lived in with people who live in New York, who just moved there and who are exploring the city so that it's the bodegas and the apartments and that kind of vibe, but then with all the people of New York. So uh, yeah, I mean, listen, would it be fun? Maybe Scream 7, Scream 8, Ghostface, top of the empire state building <laughs> well, i'd love to see it. and of course something i know a lot of fans loved obviously was seeing jenna ortega get a much bigger role in this movie um obviously she was coming off the success of wednesday i'm guessing you probably wouldn't have known that when you were shooting but obviously brought a lot more eyes to the movie but what did it mean to you to, to have more of her in this film and to get to work with her more than you did on on the last installment I mean, it was a thrill. I think we knew, you know, first first minute of shooting with her on screen, screen five, that she was something special. I, it's it's just hard to be around her and not just feel that, you know, that the sort of running joke that we had on that movie and this one is that Jenna's just built different. <laughs> and so I think we knew, yeah, that I we we obviously love her role in in the previous movie, but knew that there was there was a ton more. To, to give her in in six and um and also knew that she would handle it like a pro i think for us you know the goal was to just make sure that the ensemble jenna included all had more to do in this movie i think we we not only fell in love with working with those people but i think genuinely fell in love with their characters um while making scream five and and it just felt like such an opportunity to get to to get to know, know them better in this movie and um we think they just did such a great job in this film. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, David Arquette recently said he's watched the movie and he loved it. And he's I know he's got nothing but good things to say about both of you guys. But, of course, he was upset to be killed off. A lot of fans were upset <laughs> to see it. But do you, do you regret that? Right or, <laughs> or do you think it's important that, you know, no one is safe in this franchise, even those beloved iconic characters we all know from the past movies? Yeah, I think a lot of it, too, is 
expectations, subverting expectations, you know what I mean? And it's constantly playing that, like, it's, if you look at the two that we've made, they, they don't have that same outcome in the second one. We actually, you know, we've, we've been hearing the words plot armor a lot lately, but there's like, it's that fun idea of mm -hmm. you are safe, you aren't safe, you are safe, you aren't safe. And Dewey for us in the previous ones was the character that you kind of had the most fun with because you've seen him get like brutalized like three or four times. And I think when we first read the script for Screen 5, the scene where he dies, it was so moving and so powerful because you're kind of not expecting it. And then it's treated with a lot of reverence and a lot of respect. And, you know, when we were with David shooting that in Wilmington, it was the the like the gravitas that he brought to the De Dewey character in Scream 5. I think it was more than we could have hoped for. And it really, it just made that scene so hard because you, it, there was the caricature of Dewey was kind of stripped away a little bit. And there was, yeah. and there's always such a humanity to Dewey. Of course, that's I think why we all love him. But, but seeing that kind of weight, just it just made it so powerful. And then you know, I, it, that was, man, that's it's hard to kill your favorite characters. It's just that's yeah. Girl. It's like yeah. So we, it was really nice of David to say those nice things, and he reached out to us, and mm -hmm. that was really special. You know, it's it, was, it really meant a lot. That's awesome. And I got to say, talking to legacy characters, you had me worried about Kirby at one point in this movie. And of course, her return really welcomed again by fans after Screen 4. But what was the process of bringing Hayden back like? And if you had to have managed to get her, would that have, do you think, resulted in some big changes to the movies, either with another legacy character or just maybe changing that altogether? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a very early idea. I, we wanted to bring her back in five and and had um, had actually spoken with her and and had a great conversation and she was super thrilled to and and wanted to come back wanted to be involved and it just felt to us like to bring her back for five we wouldn't have done that character justice it would have been a it would have been sort of fan service it would have been just a cameo and it it felt like um you know given how beloved well Kirby is and how talented Hayden is if you can use that if you can deploy that you want to deploy it right and so you know, Jamie and Guy always had this vision for bringing her back in a more consequential way in, in six. And, um, and it was everything, I mean, it was everything you sort of dreamed it would be, you know, she's, she's just an absolute pro. And I mean, it, it felt like, yeah, it felt like being on set with any of those legacy characters where, you know, you're, you're standing on, uh, you know, at work with like a, one of the greats, like one of the people you've idolized. And, and it was so cool to watch her bring Kirby back to life, but also bring Kirby back to life 10 years later. I think that that was one of the things that was so fun is Guy and Jamie have a knack for sort of dropping you into characters' lives and stories at, at really interesting and consequential moments. And um, we were just really, really, it was fun to, to see, uh, you know, how that character came back. And Hayden's just a joy. Yeah, I, I loved it. And, you know, just to get into spoilers a little bit, you know, Sam's journey it's so compelling. And obviously in that final act, we see her suit up as Ghostface. So do you think she's potentially heading down a dark path forward? Or maybe is this the start of Ghostface becoming a force for good or even an anti-hero? I like that. Ghostface is a <laughs> force for good. I don't know. We don't know where it's heading, but we, you know, we, that, I love the idea of Ghostface Cape Crusader. Oh, so well, just one final question for you guys before we wrap. I know there's been a lot of talk recently about you doing a monster movie for Universal, maybe with Melissa being part of that. So is there anything you can tease about those plans or is it still early days on that one? I, I think the tease is that we're in Ireland prepping it right now. <laughs> so <laughs> it is it is hopefully going to get going to get up and shooting here in the next few weeks. Um, I mean, look, we're getting to work with Melissa again. It's just it's a dream. She's become just a dear dear friend over the last few years and i mean you know we could work we work with her on everything we would um but this is it's a fun movie um it has a lot of the energy i think people uh have come to associate our work with it's funny it's fun it's a bloodbath it's it we're excited to uh to get to share more about it oh fantastic i'm so excited for you guys for that and for obviously this release scream six because what a great couple of movies and hopefully Scream 7 as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, Josh. So good awesome to see you again. With you. Thanks, yeah, guys. Bye. Bye.